All right. Now, next one here. Uh, I need one version of the truth with my data, meaning everyone should base reports on the same data structure. Uh, so this is a classic problem. Everyone is trying to make their own solution. They're all looking at the same data, but they're coming to different conclusions. Well, this is definitely more of the corporate BI solution. Having that one version of the truth is definitely a need in really every company. Uh, and, and having that need is, is something that can be solved easily, or, or I shouldn't say easily, but more traditionally through a corporate BI solution. Okay. One of the things you will see as a problem with personal or self-service BI solutions is that multiple people will all start to create their own solutions on data, and maybe as they create those solutions on the data, they come to different conclusions, or they make different, uh, they make different modifications that uh, maybe lend themselves more to answer the question in their way versus how uh, the entire company looks at it. So having that one version of the truth is really actually very important. So you, what you'll find out is that corporate BI solutions and personal BI solutions really can work together. There's, you don't have to have one or another. You can start off with a corporate BI solution and then build some personal BI solutions on top of it, or, or vice versa. You can actually start off with a personal BI solution and mold that into more of a corporate BI solution. And I'm going to show you an example of that here later. All right, one, the last one I'll have here is I need a more agile approach to developing BI, meaning that I have, as I develop my uh, BI solutions or my business intelligence solutions at my work, I oftentimes have requirements change. I'm, I'm sure you guys have experienced that as you develop solutions, requirements change very frequently. And really the best way of developing for dealing with more of an agile approach is a personal BI solution. Uh, because they're very quick to develop, it's also very quick to make changes. When those uh, requirements changes ha inevitably happen, it's much easier to adapt when you have a personal BI solution rather than a corporate BI solution. And I'm sure many of you have experienced that before. So we wanted to start you off here with talking more about, uh, just in general, why you would choose one over another. So those are some scenarios. There's more scenarios than that, obviously. Uh, but I want to get a lot of information in here for you. And, and the next thing we're going to talk about here is the different roles that exist within self-service BI. Okay? So we talked about why you would choose one over a moment ago. Now we're going to talk about who does what within a personal BI solution. So you really have many different roles, and these are roles that I came up with or, or, or kind of borrowed here, here and there, and I made up one as well. But there really are four roles for uh, creating uh, self-service BI solutions. Now, one person can hold many roles. Uh, you may have one person here that holds three roles or one person that holds two roles. But these roles are important, and they're roles that you'll use throughout the creation of a self-service BI solution. Uh, the first one there is kind of tagged. This, this uh, phraseology has actually become very popular. Uh, and it's called a data wrangler. And basically what a data wrangler is in charge of is they're going to bring together multiple data sources and they're, they're in charge of making sense of it. Meaning they have this data and they need to make sense of it so that it can be used for reporting on. So that uh, data wrangler is in charge of uh, kind of the ETL process. Okay? If it's a personal BI solution, that would be done through something like Power Query. And they're also in charge of modeling the data so that someone can later report on it. Okay, so modeling would be done through something like Power Pivot. An often forgotten role here that I have mentioned is the data steward. The data steward is really in charge of having some cohesion across all of your different departments. So if I have multiple departments that start creating their own personal BI solutions or self-service BI solutions, they're all going to start coming to their own conclusions, and I really need some cohesion across all those departments. So they're not looking at the same data, but really coming to opposite results. And that's what a data steward is, is involved with. Uh, often a data steward is, is a part of IT because they know the data very well, but they don't have to be in IT. Uh, and they're really in charge of enforcing policies and, and making sure that people are coming to the same conclusions. So they know the data very well, they investigate it, and they make sure that everyone's following general policies. Now the power analyst here, the, la the second to last one, the third one I have listed here, is someone that is more in charge of creating reports. Okay, now they would, the, the typical power analyst would use something like Power View, which we'll talk about in a bit. They would use Power View for building reports on top of, and that way whenever they are um, designing reports, they would work with that last category of roles, which was the collaborative user, to really get exactly what they need for their end users. Okay, so Power Analyst creates the reports based on what the data wrangler created, the data models that the data wrangler created, and then the collaborative user finally is the person that consumes the reports, and they add their own little perspective on the reporting layers as well. Okay, so in general, these are kind of some high-level roles that you'll have within Self-Service BI, and we'll kind of talk, uh, talk to this a little bit later as well. All right, so let me, let's talk in general about the Self-Service BI lifecycle. 
you really ha at a high level have three different things you're trying to do. You have a data extraction, meaning you're trying to get data somewhere, some data in some place, whether it's in Excel or whether you have it in uh, some other kind of uh, reporting layer. You're trying to get data somewhere. So there's a data extraction portion of your self-service BI lifecycle. There's also a data modeling portion of your lifecycle. And what that data modeling portion of your lifecycle is doing is it's making the data make sense. Okay, so you may extract some data that is really kind of all over the place, and the, the data modeling portion is you make sense of it. You pull it together, you do da mashups of multiple data sources, and you make it into a way that can be consumed or in a reporting layer. So you see that we have that last one there, the data presentation. Obviously, once you extract the data, model it into something that's consumable, the last thing you want to do is you want to present the data. So you'll present the data to your users, that way they have uh, some visualization aspect of your data. Okay. Now let's talk about this a little bit more specific. So this is just at a high level. Let's get a little bit more detail. If we're talking about these three different uh, high-level portions of self-service BI, let's then talk more specifically about um, what tools you would use for each of these. Okay. So this slide here actually will talk about data extraction first. Data extraction you can do through a couple different tools. You can do it through Power Pivot or Power Query. Power Pivot has the ability to bring multiple data sources together. I'm listing out just a, a couple of them here. There's more data sources than that. Uh, and you can pull those data sources into Power Pivot and then create relationships uh, together uh, between them using a Power Pivot model. Power Query is a little bit different. Power Query is uh, unique, and it's a new, new tool. It's unique in that it can pull these data sources from multiple types of sources, but it's not really a modeling tool. Power Query is is more designed for a self-service ETL tool. So think of Power Pivot, the top one there, as a self-service analysis services, so self-service cube tool. And Power Query is almost like a self-service SSIS. It gives your end users, or power users, really, this is more of a power user tool. It gives your power users the ability to create their own extractions and transform the data before they finally load it into a Power Pivot model, for example. So you have two options here. Why would you have both these options? Power Query is more used when you have a lot of transformations of the data that needs to happen before you load it into a model. And if you're already happy with your data, you may just bring it straight into Power Pivot. And that's why you see both of these under the data extraction sections. But once you're done with something in Power Query, you can then import it into Power Pivot. And I'll demonstrate that to you as well. 